One of the most difficult and intricate machines ever created is a jet engine. A jet engine is made up of hundreds, even thousands, of small, moving pieces of varied sizes and interfaces. Due to its intricacy, very few organizations are knowledgeable on how to accomplish it properly. The development of cutting-edge fighter jet engines has reached its apex in nations like the United States, Russia, and France. None of the engine suppliers in the world has disinclined to supply aviation engines to India. They don't care about safeguarding technology because an aero engine is extremely challenging to reverse engineer. Precision engineering and high temperature composites and alloys are the essential technologies in this industry that are very difficult to duplicate. Even China, which has years of copying experience, has not been able to reverse engineer a high performance aircraft engine. What about India? Can India make jet engines indigenously? India has developed important rocket technology but has not yet developed a robust fighter jet engine. Some claim that this is the case because cryogenic rocket technology is simpler and jet engine technology is more difficult, however this is not true at all. Both items present unique difficulties and issues. In reality, the same fundamental physics concept governs both jet engines and rockets. They both release fuel out the rear. This exhaust gains momentum, which is equal to the momentum the vehicle gains propelling the vehicle forward. One distinction between rockets and jets is the type of fuel used. Jet engines use air to breathe. They take in air, which includes the oxygen required for combustion, mix it with fuel, burn it to increase pressure, and then speedily expel the waste gases out the rear. This high-speed mass ejection pulls the plane forward. Rockets do almost the same thing, with two exceptions. Unlike jets, they carry their own oxygen along with them, and a rocket does not have wings that add lift. The failure of Indian industry and research organizations to develop and manufacture an indigenous jet engine has been one of India's ongoing problems in both military and civil aviation. A system's industrial technological and systemic competency is what enables an ecosystem to design, develop, and produce fighter jet engines. This capability goes beyond simply producing the machine in hand. The Indian civil aviation sector imports all of its aircraft engines and the absence of an indigenous engine prevents organizations like HAL from developing even a tiny jet-powered commercial aircraft. India is on track to create its own fifth-generation AMCA fighter aircraft. The fighter is probably a multi-purpose combat aircraft built for air superiority, ground assault, bombing, intercepting, strike, and other sorts of missions. Supercruise, stealth, ESA radar, maneuverability, and cutting-edge avionics are all combined in it. The engine, which must be able to provide the performance required for a sophisticated aircraft, is the fundamental obstacle to the development of a fifth-generation fighter. India has been working on the Kaveri engine project for a long time and the LCA Tejas was originally going to use this engine. However, the Kaveri program was formally delinked from the Tejas program in September 2008 since it was unable to meet the required technical standards or adhere to its planned timetables. The Kaveri engine has only been able to muster a meager 75 kilonewtons during flight testing in Russia, while the Tejas requires an engine with 82 to 90 kilonewtons of peak performance. Limited resources, as well as technological ineptitude, are the causes of such a thrust shortfall. The defense minister testified before parliament in December 2012 that the Kaveri engine program had only been given 2,839 crore rupees for research and development, including the establishment of engineering and test facilities, despite the fact that international original equipment manufacturers spend billions of dollars on engine development. The Kaveri engine project wasn't entirely unsuccessful. Eight model and four core engines were created by GTRE. With assistance from the Russian Central Institute of Aviation Motors, the engine successfully completed the altitude test in 2010. Currently, the Kaveri engine is being developed for use in new systems such as drones. 
it has shown 75 kilonewtons of thrust, and a brand new 51 kilonewtons dry engine for UCAVs is now being developed. An unmanned strike aerial vehicle USAV with a total weight of 13 tons and a fluidic thrust vectoring nozzle will be powered by Kaveri dry variant. In order to help India reach its goal of being self-sufficient in military hardware, the Ministry of Defence has given its representatives till the earliest possible date to wrap up discussions with France to co-develop a new fighter jet engine. For the next class of advanced medium combat aircraft, India needs a new 110 kilonewton powered engine. India has been in talks with France to use part of the offsets resulting from the Rafale fighter jet agreement to fund the project. Safran, a French engine maker, has proposed a competitive technology transfer to create the engine and leverage the Rafale deal's offset credits. As part of the Rafale offsets deal, the French engine manufacturer, Safran, is requesting more than 1 billion euros to transfer the knowledge required to construct the engines. France agreed to invest 50% or 3.9 billion euros in India in exchange for the 7.8 billion euros Rafale contract it made with India in 2016. The $1 billion agreement serves as a bitter reminder of India's inability to develop its own combat jet engine for the Air Force and jet engine scientists. The US has also resurrected its earlier proposal to work with India on the creation of jet engine technology that might be used to power India's future advanced medium combat aircraft. One of the top jet engine producers in the world, General Electric of the US, has presented a proposal for the joint development of a 110 kilonewton thrust engine with Indian authorities. India has to innovate here. Necessity is the mother of all inventions. Back in the 90s, cryogenic rocket engines were necessary for India's heavy lift launch vehicle. However, then US Senator Joe Biden was instrumental in keeping India from obtaining the cryogenic engine technology that drives its GSLV family of heavy lift rockets. India chose to strike back out of need by creating its own cryogenic technology. India is the sixth country to have perfected the cryogenic engine technology independently of any other country, despite the fact that it took more time, money and scientific effort. Because this engine was created from scratch, it was a really difficult task. Cryogenics is currently a difficult technology to learn. Liquid hydrogen serves as the fuel and liquid oxygen serves as the oxidizer in cryogenic rocket engines. At minus 185 degrees Celsius, oxygen becomes liquid, and at minus 256 degrees Celsius, hydrogen does the same. Extreme cold must not damage the materials utilized, but the engine's other end needs to resist extremely hot temperatures. To protect its aim to domesticate its air force, India must act swiftly and wisely when deciding how to gain access to jet engine technology. Lack of a strong jet engine might make India fail horribly and ensure that all AMCA and stealth drone aspirations are only on paper. The absence of testing facilities in the nation is one of the factors contributing to the delay in the development of the indigenous fighter engine. India lacks a wind tunnel facility that is completely operational. The ability to model an engine that will operate at 40,000 to 50,000 feet above the earth is also lacking. The MOD has to start developing indigenous aero engine programs and facilities right away for the next combat aircraft. The quickest approach to obtain a reliable jet engine for its stealth fighters is through the DRDO's collaboration with French and US engine manufacturers on the development of an engine for the advanced medium combat aircraft.